Welcome to Sunday at the Roots. We're gonna kick things off here pretty soon, um, but I just wanted to say that we are so glad that you joined us today. Uh, we believe that any time that we open the Bible, that God is speaking directly to us, and as he speaks, things, they happen. Uh, we are transformed from the inside out um, as his spirit does what um, only his spirit can do, and that is to truly change a person's heart. Um, and that's what our prayer is today, that God would uh, do his work in us as we go through his word today. Um, hey, we miss seeing you guys and talking with you face to face so much. And one thing we miss is hearing the stories of what God is doing in your life. So I have a call to action for you. Uh, we put a link to our connection card here in the description. And what I want you to do is go to that link and share the amazing things that God is doing in your life with us. Because we want to celebrate with you. Um, or maybe things aren't going so well for you and your family right now. Um, and so we want to be praying with you and we want to be able to help you with whatever needs you have. So um, if that is you guys, if that's you and your family, don't keep those struggles to yourself. Share them with your church family so that we can help bear those burdens with you. Um, also, if you are uh, ready to give today, uh, the link to our giving page is in the description as well. Um, the last thing is join us on Wednesdays live on our YouTube page at 6 o'clock p.m. for our weekly Multiply podcast. It's uh, just another way, um, another great way for us to connect with one, each, uh, one another and for us to continue to learn what it means to be a follower of Jesus. It's awesome and it's a lot of fun, so join us then. Um, love you guys and let's get ready to receive from God's Word. Hey church family, it's the Beckless here. And we love and miss you all. Hope to see you guys soon. Hey church, uh, this is the Santee family. We love and miss you guys very much. Miss you guys. Say bye. <laughs> hey, what's up Roots fam? It's your boy Anthony, AKA Link, checking in to let you know that I miss each and every single one of you. Just know when things get back to normal, the hugs will be back on deck. God bless each and every single one of you. There's no tea that can redeem us. There's no right, no magic word. Only by the work of Jesus can salvation be secured. It is finished, He has done it. Let your weary heart rejoice. Our redemption is accomplished. Raise a shout with the ragged boys and go bravely into battle. Knowing he has won the war It is finished Lift your head And weep no more There's no sacrifice to offer 
There's no penance to complete Freely drink of living water Without money come and feast It is finished, He has done it Let your weary heart rejoice Our redemption is accomplished Raise a shout with a ragged voice And go bravely into battle Knowing He has won the war It is finished, lift your hand Let every sinner rejoice Hear the dying victors cry Raise up your voice Sing it out through earth and sky It is finished, He has done it Let your weary heart rejoice Our redemption is accomplished Raise a shout with the ragged voice And go bravely into battle Knowing He has won the war It is finished, lift your head And weep no more
Good morning, church, and anybody else that might be joining us this morning on YouTube or Facebook. We are really missing you and bummed we can't give you a hug, but super grateful that we have technology so that we can continue to connect this way and continue to preach the Word of God that it would wash over us, strengthen us as believers and as a church. And so I want to just pray and get us started, and then we're going to jump into today's message. So, so if you could just join me in prayer. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that in this time uh, that is still chaotic and uncertain in so many ways, God, you are our rock and our refuge. You are our strength and our anchor. And so, God, you are our peace in the storm. And, and God, right now, I pray that you would give us a peace that surpasses all understanding as we focus on you, as we come before you, that you would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And God, I just pray that as your word goes out, God, that it would be producing fruit in our lives. Lord, that these seeds would grow up and produce. And so, God, I just I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. I, help, I ask that you help me to do so well and prepare all of our hearts to receive from you this morning or whenever someone might receive this word. And so, God, we ask these things and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, we are in a series going through the Gospel of John. It's the fourth Gospel account in the New Testament. And um, the series is the Gospel of John, the Light of Life. We're in the third week of this, and, and John kind of lays out his purpose in writing the entire Gospel account in John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. And it says this, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So John's intent in everything that he writes as he is inspired by the Holy Spirit to pin these words, not only for that generation, but also for us, is that we would understand who Jesus is as the Son of God, the Messiah, put our faith in him and have life in him, be made right with God in Jesus Christ. And so we're going to see today, I'm really excited, um, Jesus kind of start building followers unto himself, that people will be found and then go and find others. In fact, uh, the name of today's message is Found People, Find People. And what I want to do is just read um, the text we're going to go through today. We're still in John chapter 1. We're going to finish John today. And we're going to start in verse 35 and read through verse 51. It says this, The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? 
Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is awesome. This is, uh, you know, we've been following John the Baptist. So John, the apostle and the evangelist who's writing this gospel, has introduced us to Jesus' front runner, the forerunner, the trailblazer, John the Baptist, who would go before him and prepare the way for the king to come onto the scene. And last week, he said, that's the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world and speaks of the Spirit of God coming onto Jesus and remaining on him so he knows that this is the Messiah, this is the Savior. And so we pick up, it says, the next day. In fact, uh, this first point I just entitled, Jesus is the one to follow. So John the Baptist has been pointing people ahead of himself. He's a prophet that says the Messiah is coming. And so he keeps pointing past himself. Everyone wanted to know who he was, what made him special, and he says, I'm not special. The one who comes after me is the one you need to look to. And so here, it says uh, in verse 35 through 37, the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. We're going to find out, um, as we already read, that Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, is one of those disciples. We don't know who the other disciple is. Some have speculated that the other disciple is John, the writer of this gospel, um, some reasoning for that is it's, it's very clear that this person knew exact times of things that happened. Um, and so they think maybe he was the other uh, disciple, but we don't know that for sure. Many kind of lean that direction, but we're not positive. John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God, exclamation point. So two of his disciples, they're, they're there with him. And, and John actually had quite a few followers and he points to Jesus and says, look, the Lamb of God. And again, Uh, The day before, he said, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Um, And and he just let those around him know, this is the Son of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Now, this is great. John was an amazing man. Jesus said, there's no one greater before him that's been born unto woman uh, into this world. And so you could see that it would be something special to be a disciple of John the Baptist. Like, that's an amazing thing. In fact, not all those that are with him at this time uh, follow Jesus. Later on, as we get through the story, we'll realize that John still had disciples later on in his life, even unto his death. Um, And in Acts, we see that decades later, there are those that remained uh, called John's disciples or or those that followed his way. And so... um, These two, though, very specifically, these disciples of John, hear him say that Jesus is the Lamb of God, and they leave John to go follow Jesus. And this is awesome, because what you don't see is John being concerned about his followers, like that that he's wanting to make sure that he has some sort of prestige, or that he has uh, this, this leadership where he has this massive influence. No, he realizes that his goal is to get people unto himself only to push them to Jesus, And this is something great for us to learn as many are called into different roles in leadership um, or even for your own children. The goal is for you to hand them off to Jesus. The goal is for you to train them up and point them to Christ. And when they understand what their purpose is and their calling in following after Jesus, that you would send them well, that you would be excited that they have gone on to understand for themselves Jesus as Lord. So if you're already in a leadership role, this isn't to say, you know, oh, that person's a better leader, you should follow after them. But I'm saying that you probably have people in your life that are maybe not there for the rest of your life in the way that they are now. That, that maybe God would call them to follow Jesus unto a new area in the world, unto a new type of ministry, maybe to start their own thing. And let us learn from John to be able to say, yeah, you should follow Jesus. You, you should always be following Jesus in that. And we see that these disciples, again, there are others that didn't follow Jesus, but they have this revelation that they should, and so they do. And so um, the main point of this is just understanding, follow Jesus. 
Follow him with everything you have, no matter what it costs. And whatever you're following or whomever you're following now, uh, it's okay to, to, to leave that to follow Jesus. And um, understand the context of, of what we're saying here, but it, it wouldn't be following Jesus to leave your family or your marriage to go follow Jesus. Uh, you honor him in, in, in leading them well in following after Jesus. But I'm saying ministry, calling, purpose. Be ready to do so. Next, we see this awesome thing, uh, and I just called it, genuinely seek to know Jesus, and he will draw you in. Genuinely seek to know Jesus, and he will draw you in. So turning around, Jesus saw them falling. So these two follow after him, and he said, what do you want? And some translations say, what are you seeking? That's a good question for us to consider. What is it we actually want? Some, um, unfortunately, seek God only as like a genie in the sky. God, don't transform me. Don't be God and I'll be man and, 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 and humble myself before you. But God, just come on board my mission, my purpose, what I want to do, my desires, and give me what I want. Give me, give me, give me. Um, that's not the proper way to come before God. And, and he asked, what do you want? And their answer is awesome. They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? They want to spend time with Jesus. They want to get to know Jesus. Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. So what I want us to see here is that we're all called to seek time with Jesus. And how beautiful it is that when we seek genuine time with Jesus, he's there. He invites us to be with him in his presence. And that's, that's something great for us to understand. And, and what a great time now as our world is kind of thrown into this chaos um, and we're trying to figure out like, what do we do with our time that is normally so busy? And I'm not saying it's less busy now, but maybe you have time to focus differently uh, and, and making sure to prioritize spending time with Jesus and seeing that Jesus also wants you to do so and that he'll meet you and draw you in to that space. And let's be a people that are capitalizing on this new uh, prioritizing of time in our lives. It goes on, verse 40 through 42. Um, and I wrote down here, you never know what Jesus might do with the person you bring to him. You never know. There's uh, on either end of the spectrum. Somebody you tell about Jesus and invite to go on the journey with might betray you and hurt you deeply. Somebody you invite to come on the journey to follow after Jesus might be your companion uh, and friend along this journey for a, a lifelong thing. Some might be for a season. Some um, might have a ministry that far surpasses yours. And you should deal with your heart up front because would you be excited if now that Jesus calls someone else and uses you to draw them unto himself, they, their ministry um, exceeds yours in, in, in the eyes of man. Uh, and what we see here is something like that happens. Watch this introduction. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, Andrew, when he gets introduced, even gets introduced, they haven't even introduced Peter yet. But Andrew gets introduced as Simon Peter's brother because to those that would get this letter or get this gospel account given to them, they know P Peter. They might not remember Andrew. And so Andrew's introduction is like, Andrew, you guys know Simon Peter, right? Yeah, it's his brother. So here it is. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And Andrew's awesome. I love what Andrew does and I want us to learn from it. Was one of the two men who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The First thing Andrew did is, you know, hide away, go to seminary for four years, got his doctorate in ministry and divinity, and, and, um, and then after he knew Hebrew and Greek, uh, he finally felt prepared to go let somebody else know that Jesus is the Messiah. No. He realized he wasn't the one that had all the answers. He realized he wasn't the one that was sent there to save anybody. He understood that now that I have found this great treasure in a field, I went and sold everything and bought it. Like, this is the treasure. He is the answer. He is the way. I found the Savior. And we realized that, that 
Jesus found him, um, but in his understanding, he sees now, understands now, this is the Savior, and instantly, the first thing he does is go say, you need to know him. I'm not knocking that you should be prepared, that you should be studied, that you should be ready, and continue that, but too many people are paralyzed by not having all the answers, and they omit being on God's mission and following God's commission to go and find others and make disciples. That all of us, like the, the prerequisite to go find others and tell them about Jesus is to be found. Like you're found, go find people. And so check this out. The first thing Andrew did, the first thing he did was to find his brother Simon and tell him. So just underline this or just take note of this. Find and tell. We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. Then he gives him the good news. What does he tell him? The good news. We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. So the one that we long for, we've looked for, we've hoped for as a nation, we found hope. And I want you to come know that same hope. See that and know the Savior and follow him. And he brought him to Jesus. So finds him, tells him, brings him along the journey to follow after Jesus. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John, or son of Jonah. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Now this is awesome. He said, you are, you will be. Jesus makes a statement that, that Jesus takes you from who you are and makes you who you will be. And our confidence is in that, that God will finish the work that he started in us, in others. There's no way Andrew could have known at that time that when he brings his brother to Jesus, Jesus would say, I know who you are, but this is where I'm taking you. This is who I'm going to make you into. And, and, and think about this. Um, again, you never know what Jesus might do with the person you bring to him. Jesus, or, or Peter is brought to Jesus by his brother Andrew. But Peter, in the beginning of Acts, will be the one that stands before thousands of people declaring the good news of Jesus Christ. God works through that gospel presentation to save thousands of people unto himself. And how would he have known that? He was just faithful to, to know that I have been found, I found the Savior, and everybody needs to know. So the first thing he does is, is go, and he finds, tells, and brings somebody else along in the journey. They put their faith in Jesus, and through that obedience, God works in that, and then will save thousands through Peter. It's an amazing thing. Find them, tell them, bring them. We should all learn from Andrew, as he is an amazing example. The next point I wanna make is, once we receive the invite, we extend the invite. Again, it's a common theme that will kind of work through this because John's hope is that we all, John, the, the writer of this, hopes that we would all put our faith in Jesus Christ as Lord. And he's showing us, like, look, even from the beginning, it's been about that. From the beginning, found people, find people. Those that, that have a revelation of Jesus Christ, go and get others and hope that they would put their faith in Jesus also. Once we receive the invite, we extend the invite. The next day, so this is kind of walking us through this week. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Straightforward. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Now this basically means fish town or fisherman's town. Philip found Nathanael. Now check this out. Jesus finds Philip. Philip found Nathanael and told him. He found him. And told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So he gives Jesus um, here in, in the talking to Nathaniel, kind of gives him the formal name of what they would say in those days. To understand many people have the same names. There, there were lots of people um, with the name Yeshua. Um, and there's, there, just like there's lots of people with the name John. We've already seen that, right? We see... Um, John, the writer of the text, uh, John, the Baptist, and then it just said a moment ago, Peter, the son of John. 
Um, and so they have to define who these people are. And the way that they do that is they say the city that they're from and they're, uh, the father they're known for, right? And so in this moment, um, he ascribes to Jesus the place which he grew up and his uh, kind of legal father is what he does here. And so he goes to Nathaniel and tells him, we found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. So he says, hey, all the texts that we have, and, and these guys um, knew the word inside and out. And so he says, all of that, that points us to a savior, we found him. The one that Moses wrote about, the, the prophet that he wrote about, the one that the prophets even wrote about, that we're looking for and that we're excited about, we found him. And this is who he is by kind of the title of our day. The one is Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the son of Joseph. Nazareth, <laughs> can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asks, asked, come and see, said Philip. So Nathaniel's like, hey, that's a small town, that's a, this village. We don't know why, maybe he has some animosity with it. That, that small town wasn't spoken of much before this. In fact, not at all in the Old Testament. Um, and so it's confusing for some people because Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And so they maybe expect he's coming from there. But when he says Jesus of Nazareth, he's like, that's where our Savior's coming from? But Philip doesn't pretend to have all the answers. He just says, or he finds him, he tells him Jesus is the Messiah, and then he brings him along on the journey. And so he doesn't, he doesn't even go after like, well, yeah, that's why it makes sense that he'd be from Nazareth or try to explain everything. He just goes, come and see. Like, come along in this. And he brings him along on the journey. And what, again, I love here is that once we, re we receive the invite, we extend the invite. It's not too early for you to tell someone, I found hope, his name's Jesus. And even if you don't know all the answers, you go, listen, just come along on the journey. Just come with me as I follow after him. I don't know, I'm not the answer, he's the answer. I'm not the way, he's the way. And so uh, don't look to me to have it all figured out. Come with me as we look to him. And so uh, we see this kind of build out more and, and uh, Nathaniel goes with Philip to see Jesus. And Jesus, <laughs> I wrote down, Jesus saw you where you were and is calling you to greater things. You don't dupe God. And some of us have a hard time. Um, Jesus saw Nathaniel in his doubt. Jesus saw Nathaniel before he had this revelation of who Jesus was. And it didn't stop Jesus from inviting him on the journey. You need to understand, you are already known. God knows who you are and what you're up to, what you're doing, where you've been, and is calling you to something greater. He's calling you to this greater journey that is the fulfillment for you in laying down your life and following after Christ seeing the beauty of what God does on his mission that cannot be stopped or thwarted or, or uh, defeated, that you get called into this epic journey of following after Jesus on mission and being a part of that mission. And so we see here, um, when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. We already know because of what we've worked through. Jesus is God. Um, he knows everything. And so he'll continue to help him understand that he knows everything. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. So Nathaniel clearly is under this fig tree um, and thought nobody knew where he was at or that he was fully alone, that people, passersby, whoever didn't see him, um, but Jesus knew where he was at the whole time. When Philip went to go get him, um, Jesus knew that that was happening. I saw you. He saw him where he was at. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And, and truer words haven't been spoken. That Jesus is the son of God. He is the king of Israel. Now, that doesn't mean that he fully grasped what that meant to him at the time because there was lots of confusion of how the king of Israel would come and what the way that he would establish the kingdom. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. Jesus speaks to him and says, listen, 
you understand that I know everything, that I saw you where you were. Listen, I'm taking you from the fig tree and I'm taking you on this journey. You're gonna see greater things in following after the Messiah, the Savior, fulfilled by him through his power in, in this revelation of the God-man Jesus Christ than you could have ever imagined. If, if you believe just because I told you where you were and a bit of who you are, then wait until you see the beauty of my mission and plan as he fulfills the Father's will in his perfect life and ministry and death and resurrection and ascension that, that Nathaniel would see those things. And I just wanna tell you, um, there's some confusion with Nathaniel because Nathaniel is mentioned here and in the other um, synoptic gospels uh, in the listing of the disciples, Nathaniel's name's not there, but instead there's Bar Bartholomew. And scholars believe that it's the same person, that Nathaniel's what he went by, but Bartholomew is the son of Tholomaeus, um, and that it was one of the ways that he was known. Like many of the men in the text, uh, we just met Simon Peter, who is Simon and called Peter. Um, and so just, just a side note for you as you read through your word. Um, that, so Jesus saw you where you were, is calling you to greater things. And then lastly, Jesus is our mediator. Um, look at this verse here. He then added, very truly I tell you, or this is truly, truly, or verily, verily, or even amen, amen. You will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And so there's lots of different titles for Jesus just that we see in the text today. He's introduced by John the Baptist again as the Son of God, uh, of the Lamb of God. And then we see... Um, Nathaniel call him the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus used the title that he often uses for himself, the son of man. And then here is referencing back to even Genesis 28. And they would have known this text as they looked to Jacob, who is Israel, um, as he is in Bethel, the house of God. He said, it said, he had a dream, that's Jacob had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. In fact, later on in verse 17, I believe, um, it, it says, this is the gate of heaven. And so he's saying like, this is where heaven meets earth, earth meets heaven, where there is this opening, where there is this way. Um, and Jesus says, okay, you think it's great that I saw you under the fig tree. Just wait, you're going to see greater things. In fact, you're going to see that I am the gateway to heaven. He is the only way. Uh, and, and, and through him, we have access to the presence of God. And so Jesus makes this powerful statement about what Nathaniel will see, what all of us will know who have put our faith in Jesus Christ, and that is that we can confidently become before the throne through the finished work of Jesus Christ. He is our mediator. In fact, in 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 6, it says, This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to knowledge, come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. That has been witnessed to that Jesus is the only way and that God longs for you to come to him the only way that you can. And that is through putting your faith in Jesus Christ, believing in Jesus Christ as Lord. And that God longs for that, wants that, and has made a way for that. And so I hope that today, if you already have, you have we would praise him for that. If you haven't, I hope that today in, in, a, in a world that is chaotic and broken, um, you would put your faith on the rock and you would put your faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ, as Lord. And, and I want to just um, end our time here today uh, with just four things we notice in the text. Kind of repeat it over and over. Um, that we're called to know Him, find them, tell them, and bring them. Know Him, find them, uh, tell them, and bring them. So first... Know him. We just talked about the fact that Jesus Christ is the mediator. He's the gate. He's the only way. There's nothing more important than you knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior 
and Lord. We saw that uh, with the first two disciples that were John the Baptist disciples that go with Jesus. He says, what are you seeking? And they say, where are you staying? They want to spend time with him. Um, seek to draw near as, and Christ will draw you near. S seek him and put your faith in him. There is only salvation in him. And so my question for you to consider is, do I know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Not just know about him, but know him as your King and Savior and Lord. Next, so we know him, and when we know him, when we have received that invite and accepted that invite, we go and invite others. Um, we find them. Find others that don't yet know Jesus. And this might be more difficult depending on your exposure to the world. What do I mean by that? Um, maybe your parents did a killer job. You're still young. Your parents did a killer job of trying to keep you away from the broken things of this world. Um, and so you've always kind of been away from this world. Listen, we're called to uh, be in it, but not of it. So it is right that you have great boundaries set up, that you have fellow Christians that are in your life to support you and strengthen you, but they strengthen you so that you can go out and be a light in the darkness, not so that you can just keep your light to yourself. And so I want to encourage you Go among the lost. Thank God that somebody that was lost came to you or your family to, to expose you to the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And so you might have to do some work. Um, for you, you might have to go pretty far. For some of us, uh, you might go like, man, that's all I'm surrounded by. And the good news is that and there are so many opportunities for you to tell other people about Jesus Christ. And so find them. Um, where will you find the lost? Where will you go? Answer it. Don't just kind of theoretically think about it. Answer it. Will I go to my neighbor? Will I go down the road? Is it places at my work? Do I need to get involved somewhere that would expose me to other things? Do I need to get in different rec leagues in the community? Do I need, what does this look like? And, and place yourself in those positions so that you can find others and tell them about the hope of the world, Jesus Christ. And that leads me straight to tell them. So know him, find them, tell them. Tell others the good news of Jesus Christ. In him we have forgiveness, hope, purpose, peace, joy, rest, and life. In a world that is guilty, hopeless, lost, chaotic, sad, busy, and dead. If that ain't the truth, watch the news for a moment. Hear people talk for just a little while. I'm not saying everybody's down and out, but we live in a broken world. And people are feeling it. And, and if you'll let them, they'll tell you the areas in which they need saved. And in those times, we see those as opportunities not to give them a way of the world that might soothe their pain for a moment, but the healer and savior, Jesus Christ. So again, in him we have, don't forget this, for those that just need to be pumped up too, remember that in Christ, we have forgiveness, hope, purpose, peace, joy, rest, and life, and more in a world that is guilty, hopeless, lost, chaotic, sad, busy, and dead. Who are you going to tell about Jesus? Write it down. Figure it out. Who are you going to tell? Not who should someone tell. Who are you going to tell? And if you're stopping because you don't have the answer, if you have Jesus, you have the answer. Let's move on. We know him. We find them. We tell them. We bring them. Listen, your job is not to have all the answers, but to invite others on the journey with you in following Jesus. And how great is that? We're not built to do this on our own. That we're called to be a part of a body. That we're called to follow along with other believers and following after Jesus. And think of the encouragement, the strengthening, sometimes the challenging that might need to happen in our lives. But also the uplifting and the opportunities for us to grow in looking more like Christ as we serve the body, serve other believers, and do that as we are a witness to the world and going and finding and telling and bringing others along in this. So lastly, who are you inviting to follow Jesus with you? And if we could gather as the church, I would also say that part of that is inviting them to come be a part of the church. Part of following after Jesus is being a part of his body. And so, who are you inviting? Specifically, who are you inviting to follow Jesus with you? Now, I know that you might have the tendency, as I do and others, to only think of other believers when they say that, in like a discipleship role that way. And that's good and that's great. And I'm specifically saying, those that are lost, 
that you can find, tell, and bring along on this journey. I'm challenged by this. I hope that you're challenged also. First and foremost, you must know him. And I just want to encourage you. It is by his spirit that we have the power, that we are equipped with his word to go and do these things. And I'm grateful for God's word. I believe that it's been strengthening to all of us today as we finish John chapter one. Next week, we'll go to John chapter two. And also, if you haven't yet, join us on Wednesday nights at six as we um, jump into a book called Multiply and talk about discipleship. So I wanna pray with us and we'll leave you there. God, I thank you. I thank you for your word that is alive and active and doing a mighty work in each and every of our hearts. Lord, I just pray that our hearts wouldn't be hardened by your word, but be softened by your word, that we would be transformed to look more like Jesus. God, help us. There are so many things that pull us away, distract us. Lord, help us to be focused on your purpose, on your mission. God, I thank you that you call us on to the greatest mission that cannot, will not fail. That is your mission. God, help us to do well in following after you. Lord, help us to know you, tell others, or find others, tell others, and bring others along in this. God, I also thank you for the many things you're doing in this time, in provision and protection and strengthening and giving peace. God, we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. I miss you. Can't wait to see you again. Thanks again for joining us today. We want to stay connected to each other as best we can during this season. So what we did was we put a link to our connection card in the description. And if you have any prayer requests or praise reports or any other specific needs, please don't keep them to yourself. Fill out the online connection card so that we can stay connected to you. Also, if you're ready to give today, we put the link to our giving page right there in the description as well. We love you guys, and we can't wait to see you again next time.